hopefully there is that message that these kids took a leap of faith, had a lot of courage to go out and find out who they are. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie uh, for Reason TV, and today we're talking with Jenny Lynn Merton and Tyler Meeson, the directors of the highly acclaimed movie Sons of Perdition. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Explain what your movie's about and why somebody should see it. Well, our film, uh, Sons of Perdition, uh, details the lives of three boys who were exiled from their polygamous community of Colorado City, Arizona, um, the headquarters and uh, home of uh, the FLDS, of right, which the Warren Jeffs, Fundamentalist, fundamentalist Latter-day Latter Saints. Saints, which is an offshoot of the uh, LDS, the Mormon faith. Uh, they don't, uh, the, the Mormon church, the mainstream Mormon church does no longer practice polygamy. Um, their prophet and leader, Warren Jeffs, had a kind of a tight-fisted, iron-fisted rule over this community. And for the last uh, X amount of years, they've, um, been a, they've been kicking teenage boys out of the community. And these boys have little to no educations, no contact with the outside world. Um, and pretty much one day, they're thrust out into the world they know very little about. Why are they being kicked out? Well, that's kind of a tricky sort of question and a quandary that we dealt with in the film. I mean. You know, some arguments are that they're being kicked out because it's a numbers game. I mean, if you've got to have more than one wife to get into heaven, then you have a math problem. Right. Uh, so there is some of that, but, you know, because Warren Jeffs himself has probably over 80 wives. Um, and, you know, the leaders of the church have more wives. But um, some of the sort of, you know, researchers and other people contend that it's more about obedience. And so they sort of, you know, push them to the edge and kind of force them out. So some are literally kicked out, some are just, their lives are made miserable and they're marginalized and they go. So, I mean, you get rid of the troublemakers, or the right. likely troublemakers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you get rid of anybody that's not going to completely toe the line, right. keep the traditions, and, you know, commit crimes for you. Can you describe the scene where uh, one of the, uh, the female characters in the film, 14-year-old Hillary, is choosing between a cop and her uh, and her sister and family in a in a mall parking lot. What's what's going on there? Well, uh, one of the main characters of the film, Joe, um, he's out and he left on his own recognizance. He um, he really wants his family to come out, and that includes his mother and his 14-year-old sister, Hillary. And um, in this particular scene, she's spotted by us and the boys at a mall with her older sister. And um, she wants to leave. And she makes a notion to her, you know, to the kids, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. So Sam, who's another character in the film, calls the police. The police come and show up. And they, they ask her, do you want to go? And she says, yes, I want to leave. Now, her older sister, Sabrina, who is also in the polygamous community, um, does not want her to leave and is under orders from her father not to let her go. So she literally holds one arm while the police officer has the other arm of this poor little 14-year-old girl. And we, as filmmakers, are shooting this from across the parking lot. What's it like to be filming that as a, you know, I mean, what, what were you feeling? I mean, in that particular case, it was, you know, it was very frightening because we, we had to, you know, we got involved enough that we were actually concerned, you know, we were concerned about what was literally happen happening there with the kids but not, and not just filming it. Um, but, you know, you're trying to hide from the police so they don't see you shooting. <laughs> and you are trying to capture a, a really, you know, sort of frightening moment. So you're, you're kind of, I mean, so we did a lot of sort of hidden shooting and had to kind of hide. And, you know, and there was, I mean, you know, there was this moment where, you know, Sabrina looks right at us, and you know it's hard to keep the the, the shot right there. You know, I mean, you have to um, you have to take some some risks. What what is the threat posed by the FLDS, in your opinion, to a kind of ideal of of religious freedom in America? Well, I wouldn't say it's. I mean, yeah, is it a threat to religious freedom? Um, they practice what they want, and that is one of the beauties of America, I suppose. But um, are they breaking laws? Yeah, absolutely. Are they finding ways to subjugate those laws, uh, finding little loopholes? Uh, do, they marry, um, do they marry more than one wife? No, actually they don't. Legally they don't. They legally marry one woman and then they spirit marry the others. So, um, and, and are they breaking laws? In, in the state of Utah and Arizona, um, you can be married at 15 as long as the parents have, give permission to do so. Um, and of course, that's a law that goes back hundreds of years. Right. So they're not necessarily breaking the law, and they've found ways to find uh, loopholes. But are they breaking the law in many ways? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. Well, I, I think it's I think it's a challenge to freedom of religion in the sense that if we if they are an example of the right to have the freedom of religion, 
and this is the way that it is being treated, and then it becomes a tug of, tug of war, you know, legislatively and, and um, you know, culturally, then yeah, th then it becomes a problem because it's sort of saying, all right, we've given our freedoms and this is the way that we're going to exercise them, then we do, then we have a problem and it brings up the issue of to what extent can you, can you and should you exercise those? And I, you know, I think it, it's kind of in a way creates a blight on that freedom. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what brought you to this particular topic? Well, Jenny and I um, were both ex-Mormons, which is different from being FLDS, of right. course. And uh, the official Mormon church, or the, the Salt Lake City-based main church, does not recognize FLDS? Not at all. No. 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 They, you know, and came out in one of their conference speeches, you know, mm -hmm. years ago and just said, we have absolutely nothing to do with them. Right. You know, they left and do you, do you guys buy that? Or is yeah. there a nod and a wink, or is it definite? Uh, well, no, they, I, yeah. I buy it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, did they, yeah. did they create the mess? Yeah, yeah, they did. Did they practice polygamy previously? Absolutely. Although that, uh, I mean, they officially gave that up as part of doctrine uh, as a cost of entry into the union. Uh, right. Exactly. Yeah, in 1890. Yeah, in 18, yeah. yeah. In 1890, they said no longer practice polygamy, and that was part of being able to gain <laughs> statehood as a, as a, as a the state of Utah. What is the, what's the, the kind of larger reach of the movie, um, if there is one? What's, what's it say about being young uh, in, in contemporary America? Probably the biggest sort of message for us was sometimes you have to make a huge leap of faith to leave your faith. Mm -hmm. And you have to sometimes sacrifice a whole lot to find out who you are. Mm -hmm. And so it might be leaving your family. It might be, you know, coming out of the closet. It might be choosing to be a filmmaker or an artist when your family says, you know, forget it, you'll never make it, don't do it. And so I think um, for us, that sort of underlying message is, you know, fight for who you want to be. And I think that's something that everybody can, whether you're interested in the kind of like, you know, messier details of polygamy and the right. curiosity, but ultimately there is that message that these kids took a leap of faith, had a lot of courage to go out and find out who they are. And it, and it doesn't matter if yeah. you're from Colorado City. It doesn't matter if you're from the slums. Bronx, it doesn't matter if you're from right. the swamps of Louisiana or from Orange County, California. It doesn't so matter. You can, you can leave that behind. So it's a story with a feel-good message. <laughs> it's uh, a coming-of-age story, yes. Uh, talk, um, uh, talk about the kids in the film. What, what kind of future do they have in a post-FLDS uh, world? Um, do they have, you know, will they be able to make it? Or w what's, what's going to happen to them? Well, I think first and foremost uh, is that they just they don't have the religion it takes. Or I'm sorry, not the religion, but the education it takes to survive in a modern world. Just the basics. They don't have, um, you know, the man landed on the moon. They don't know modern history. They don't know checking accounts. They just don't know how to survive. Rock and roll. Yeah, they, they don't know <laughs> modern media. They don't know anything like that. So, so that alone, and just your basics, your basic English skills, your basic writing skills, um, how to fill out a job application or a resume, no idea whatsoever. Um, and those basics really keep them. And, and, and also just the schooling. You know, they try to get into school, but when you've never gone to school, um, for the most part, you really don't even know how to do it. And so they try and get into school, but it scares them. They, they've never made decisions. They've never been able, they, they, this is what you wore, this is when you ate, this is the job you're going to have, this is the wife you're going to have, this is the house you're going to have. And then one day, they have every decision right in front of them, millions. Right and they don't know how to make those decisions. Well, I want to thank you and best of luck on Sons of Perdition. Uh, for Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie and we've been talking with Jenny Lynn Merton and Tyler Meeson. Thanks very much. Thanks for thank having you. us.